Ken Bostrom Ministries. Beginning January 2018, Ken Bostrom Ministries engaged in a whole new assignment by entering the airwaves of the world. Don't miss Ken and Mary Bostrom Ministries Live. Hey, thank you for tuning in today to Ken Bostrom Ministries. I'm Mary Bostrom, and, and uh, thank you for being with us on United in His Purpose. You know, together we can do more. Amen. You know, we have Dr. Bree Keaton, um, Kansas City, Missouri, with us today. And we're excited to have her. If you watch, watch show one, you saw her amazing testimony. I loved it. Two, the story of her ministry and how God sent her down to the Amazon and then now into the Congo. But on this show, number three, I'm going to let her loose. And I want you to share what God's put on your heart. So preach to him. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to start with a scripture. Um, and, and it's just an honor to be here. I'm just enjoying myself so much. Thank you. And this is our third show now. Yeah. Uh, it says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Amen. So God does love the least of these, the, the ones everybody else hates. And that's so true with the pygmies. They are the most hated people on planet Earth, bar none. Really? Africans hate pygmies. Hmm. They think of them like you would a rodent in your house that needed to be exterminated. That's exactly what they think. And they don't mind that the rebel soldiers are killing and eating them. Hmm. They just think, oh, well, so what? Because they don't realize that they're not animals, they're people. Yeah. Beautiful, smart people. No, they can't read or write or even count, but they're smart. And they know how to shoot an animal, how to dress that animal, how to live in the forest, how to hunt and gather. They have a great deal of wisdom, and their society is very unique. Uh, but the thing is, what can you do when a whole lot of people hate in other people. Well, God sent me in there, go rescue pygmies. The third time he spoke to me, that's what he said after I came back. See, I would have had to go on the, on the internet and try to figure out what a pygmy was, because you know that's just unfamiliar to most people. Well, I remembered where they were from a National Geographic when I was a child, and, and so I, I knew where to look, but I had no idea I would ever go and make a whole lifestyle out of rescuing pygmies. But, but this scripture just says it all. Yes, they're poor, they're downtrodden, but God loves them, and he's going to make them, one day they will set among princes. Imagine that, those little pygmies. And in, inherit in, the in, throne of glory. In heaven with us. Mm -hmm. That's what will happen. So I want to spend a second and talk about the glory of God, if I may. And I'm going to go to John. Uh, chapter 17 and there I want to show you a scripture so here we go <clears throat> verse 20 this is Jesus speaking his actual words neither pray I for these alone those that were sitting in front of him right there mm -hmm. that moment but for them also which shall believe on me through their word so that's us we believe through the word they wrote about what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. So this is a word for us, that they all may be one. We're to be one. Yeah. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That word in, oh my goodness. We're to be in him, hidden in him, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Now that's Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> that they also may be one in us. Now, that's unity, the spirit, and the bond of peace with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thus, we are hidden in him. We are not our own. And our will, that's not what should be done, but his right. will be done in us. Amen. 
and then we'll have the hope of glory, you see? Because the one who is the hope of glory lives in us. All right, now, why does he live in us? Because he wants us to fulfill our destiny in him. Right. All right, so now, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So the reason we're supposed to be one and not fighting each other, Mary, that's what Christians do. They fight each other. Mm -hmm. and, and do you know there are over 30,000 divisions? Oh, I mean denominations. Divisions. Yeah. In America. Yeah. Just America. Yeah. That's all the divisions. Yet God doesn't say to do that. Wow. He says, be one in me. And don't fight over every little thing. Go and win souls and stop fighting. How about that? You know, you get all cloistered in one spot and you forget that the whole world is full of the lost. Mm -hmm. And it, and he says here, be one that the world may believe thou sent me. As long as we're fighting over, when shall he return? Well, I'll never speak to you again because you don't agree with me. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. No, no, forget that. Mm -hmm. He'll come when he comes and no man knows the day or the hour. Isn't that right? right? So let's stop fighting about it, and let's go do what he said, go win souls. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And then signs and wonders will follow you. Amen. Isn't that true? So we've kind of missed the boat on this. We want signs and wonders while we sit in one place. Mm -hmm. He says, no, go into the world, and then signs and wonders. It's just like give and then it'll be given unto you. It doesn't say, wait till it's given unto you and then give, does it? You have it? a part. See, we're backwards mm -hmm. on everything. Yeah. So let's go on here because this is really the key I wanted to read. Verse 22, And the glory, oh, which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. So God gave Jesus his glory, and Jesus gave it to us. We now have that glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so what does he say? Out of our bellies. What does that mean? Out of your inmost being. Out of the deepest recesses of who you are. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And then it says, uh, different scripture, let your Light. What yeah. is that light? Yeah. The glory. Yeah. Who lives in you? The glorious one. He doesn't want you hiding that under a barrel. Oh, I'm just this little person. Or, you know, look, look at the terrible things I've done. I couldn't possibly go and preach the gospel. No, you can. Repent, get saved, and go. Yeah. Because the time is short. And tell people what great things the Lord has done for you. Let your light, that's the glory of God, so shine before men. We could even say all men. That they will glorify God who is yeah. in heaven. And, mm -hmm. and then I'll add this, so they will then go into the world. You know, we could probably win the whole world in about two weeks to a month. If we got in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, and we were truly one in Him, yeah. that the world may know thou hast sent me. That's right. Amen. And that's my dream and my hope and my prayer. Because when we learn how to release the glory into the dark and desperate parts of the world, they will come to Jesus. Yep. And I've seen it all over the world. In the darkest place on earth, and I want to say this, the single most dangerous place on planet earth right now is the Democratic Republic of Congo. There are over 150 armies fighting in there. And they're Different rebel. armies? Over 150. Nobody knows how many, but it's way over 150. There's one area north of a place called Goma, and there's 50 armies in that one region. Hmm. And they're all over. And these are jihadists. And then there's the two Congolese armies, and then there's the UN, over 20,000 troops of UN, more than anywhere else in the world, to just tell you how great is that war going on in there. What are they fighting over? The gold, the diamonds, the rubber, the tungsten, the copper, the precious oh. metals. They're fighting over this stuff, and, stuff. and it's real. 
Yeah. It's the richest natural resources of anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And that should tell you part of the reason they're fighting. But what do they do? They get hungry. They eat pygmies. And God told me, go in there and rescue pygmies. Is it going on right now? You bet. Is it dangerous? It's the most dangerous in the world in that Congo. Mm -hmm. And yet God sent this little blonde woman from Missouri in to rescue the most hated people on planet Earth. Don't tell me we don't have a miracle working God. Yes, we do. But look at this. He gave us his glory. Mm -hmm. And God has given me a lot of revelation how to walk in the glory uh, on my website worshipingwarriorsfellowship.com I have a DVD called Releasing the Glory and it is so powerful I, I think everybody needs it and uh, it'll change your life what we touch on today we're barely touching the surface because this is in depth and then I'm going to do a 12 part series on it too 12, awesome. 12 DVDs on it that's coming and uh, I have so much information I could go uh, eight days. I went eight days up in Syracuse, New York, and I never ran out. I wasn't even close to running out of information on the glory because mm -hmm. it's in everything. Yeah. We need the glory. We need the glory. And the glory, uh, I, I just want to read this if I can real quick. Just This is a taste. I just have a few here. I've come up with 35 ways the glory operates and God's given me more. Listen to this. Uh, how to walk in the glory, how to heal and be healed in the glory, because it's going to be a higher dimension than we've ever known. Yeah. How to release the glory, how to overcome attacks of the enemy in the glory. How to overcome Ebola and epidemics in the glory. How, how to reveal God's power in the glory. How to manifest His glory, how to fight in the glory, how to prophesy in the glory, how to heal the sick in the glory, how to hide in the glory. the glory, walk in the glory, be saved from your enemies, how to be translated in the glory, etc. But I'll say this, nothing's impossible in the glory. That's right. One time I was in the Congo, and I had just arrived after six hours driving on horrible ro roads in the rainy season, holes the size of Volkswagen, and we'd have to drive in it and get stuck, and everybody pushed it. It took six hours to get to Pygmies. They're about three or four thousand pygmies waiting for us, just dancing and singing in the deep jungle. And when we got there, they all ran out. It was so exciting. And about then, all my scouts that I'd hired to protect us and, and help us with the pygmies came running at me, and they said, you have, to, you have to go hide. The rebels have heard you're here, and there's an army of rebels coming to kill you because they heard you're here. See, they want us dead. Yeah. They want us dead because they're jihadists and they don't believe Christians should even live. No. So here they're, they're coming. I said, no, we're going to make our stand. They said, no, no, you must go hide. So we all went, me and my staff and my son Dylan, went and sat under a tree about 20 feet into the jungle, maybe a little more, and we sat around a tree. They couldn't really see us because it's very dense, you know. And we just sat there. And the rebels came, and they, I don't know how many, several hundred. And they hunted, and they hunted, and they hunted, but we were covered in a canopy of God's glory, wow. and we were invisible, and they could not see us. Wow. And they hunted for three days and three nights, and we were right there. And when they finally gave up and left, we came out, and preached the gospel to all the pygmies, and they were all saved. Mm -hmm. Now, I could tell you dozens of stories like this, how he will hide you under the shadow of his wings. Is this a picture of the glory there? Now, Over right him? there is the glory cloud of God. And do you see the cross of Christ at the top? I do. That showed up in the glory cloud. This picture is very dangerous pygmies in the northwest of the Congo. And... They have killing curses. They curse you. You'll, your heart will stop in 30 seconds. Wow. But the curse causeless shall not lie. That's Repent right. every day. Right. We are walking and I'm smiling and the glory of God is shining on me like a bright yeah. light. And behind us, the glory cloud of God showed up and the cross of Christ 
right in that glory cloud. Wow. Now, I didn't know it till we came home and developed the picture. I did not know. But that's the presence of God with us, even in the most dangerous place in the world. Even mm -hmm. with pygmies that would kill a person normally, they loved us. Uh -oh. And they all were saved, all these ones you're looking at here. They all came to Jesus. It reminds me of uh, Azusa Street. The children would play hide-and-seek in the glory. Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? Yes. You yes, can it hide is. in the glory. Yes, you can. That's one of my points here. Hiding in the... Remember how Jesus, they're going to kill him because he dared to speak the mm -hmm. word. Yeah. And they're going to shove him off a cliff. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he turned around and walked right through them and they couldn't see him. That's right. He was hidden in the glory. That's right. He was the glorious one. Now watch mm -hmm. this. Now he lives in us. Mm -hmm. We are covered, hidden in his glory. Yeah. And I could tell you, till the cows come home tomorrow, yeah. stories of being hidden in his glory. Christ in me, the, the hope, hope of, of glory. glory. And there's an anointing on the very word, glory. Yeah. We should always say it with reverence. Glory. Yeah. Yeah. See, he wants us to go yes, from glory to glory. to glory. And one day, we'll be wearing a crown of glory. How about that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Yeah. Do you know that there's a spirit of glory? It's in 1 Peter. And the spirit of glory and of God. Yeah. And so there's a spirit of glory. Now God is going to take us so much deeper when we start pressing in. Mm -hmm. But I think um, I want to tell you another story. Okay. Is that okay? Absolutely. This you just go. Well, um, <laughs> I was I was in uh, North Carolina. I was uh, waiting. I was in Pennsylvania, and I got a call from South Carolina. I would tell the story right, and uh, there was a man there with his gravelly voice, and I couldn't even hardly understand him. And I thought, who in the world got my number? You know, and he says, oh, he says I'm an ex hell's angel. I said, really? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking that's very interesting. He says, the mayor of the city has asked you to come and pray over the city because we're being overrun by gangs and prostitutes and drugs and witchcraft, and we want you to come and pray for the city. I thought the mayor said that, and I said it. He says, yes. I said, so, all right. I said, I'm in Pennsylvania. It's about an eight- or nine-hour drive. I can come uh, next week. So he said, okay. Uh, we'll get you a place to stay and all that. I said, fine. And I'm coming with my son. And we'll take a whole day and we'll pray over your city. And the whole city will be turned around. And uh, by the way, I have scripture stakes that we make and pray. And they say repentance, revival, restoration, reconciliation on there. Cool. And we pray over them with fragrant oil and put Can scriptures they oil on. Them from your... They can order them from my website. We've awesome. already prayed over every single one. Oh, Just so pour, our, claim. Uh, pour the glory into those, yes. you know. Didn't, didn't they take uh, cloths from the bodies Absolutely. of Paul and yep. Peter? Well, this is the same. Mm -hmm. And so we put him in the ground, we pray, and it changes everything. Lord. So I knew it would happen. She knew of it. She asked us to come and stake her city. So, so off we go. And uh, here's this, you know, exhales angel, but he's a mighty man of God now serving Jesus. Oh, I won't even go into all the cool things he's doing. But anyway, he took us all around the city, and I said, we're going to pick three places. Why three, Mary? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. We're going to establish His presence. Yeah. And we're going to the three worst places in that city, and the change will come. So we go there, and first thing we do, guess what? Release the glory yeah. at each stake. Then we do scriptures. Then we pray. We put the stake in the ground. And, and then we pray over it. And, and, uh, and uh, we command every wicked blood covenant be released. And we plead the blood of Jesus for blood is required for blood. Mm -hmm. And we'll stake that. Okay, so that's we did that in three places. We went to where the gangs meet. We went to where the prostitutes meet. And we went to another place. I won't name. All right, so we prayed very fervently all day and went back to where we're staying. He said, I'm going to sit by the phones. Because I'm on speed dial, he said, I help the hospitals and I help the police. And every time there's an emergency, they call me. 
and I go in and I do whatever I can do. He said, I'll sit by the phones all night. I said, okay. Next morning, he calls me. He said, there wasn't one gang war. There wasn't one Praise rape on God. the beach because there's rapes on the beach every night. Yeah. He said, uh, there wasn't a death. There wasn't an OD. There wasn't one thing that happened, not one murder, because they were having murders on a par, though they're smaller, with Chicago in that beautiful mm. resort town. Wow. And I was shocked about what I heard. He said, not one thing happened last night. I said, praise the Lord. Do you know that went five nights? Not one thing happened. His phone was quiet. Five nights. Wow. On the sixth night, nothing happened. And the next morning, a phone call from the head of the Crips. They had the Crips, the Bloods, the Pagans, and the Hells Angels all in that city. The big dogs, yeah. Head of the Crips calls the newspaper, said, come out with your camera and meet us at such and such. They came. They said, now take pictures. And the head of the Crips and the head of the Bloods had pillows, and they had a pillow fight, and they photographed, oh, and they said, sakes. we declare a truce. Praise God. Praise God. And do you know that truce has held? It's been wow. a year and a half. Wow. Now, I hear that that's catching on uh, on the East Coast. There's some in Georgia now, but they put that photograph on the front page of the paper, mm -hmm. <laughs> pillow fight. A and the whole city was transformed. I mean transformed. Is there anything too big for God? Nothing, Nothing is too big for no. our God. Nothing is impossible. So I want to say this. Stop being afraid of this coronavirus. Yes, absolutely. Stop being afraid of Ebola. Stop yeah. being afraid. Stop being afraid. Because God has not given yeah. us a spirit of fear. You, you look here. These pygmies, see them in their uh, little leaves there? They, they were naked before that. And they came out of the forest to help me carry all these gifts where we always give a lot of nice gifts. You see clothes and mm -hmm. machetes and food and salt and, and other supplies. And we give it. And they, these are scouts from my favorite chief. And they're going to help us carry that down in the jungle. In that jungle, there are rebels that would love to kill us. Mm -hmm. But God has protected us over mm -hmm. and over. And here, these ones with their killing, this is... East Congo, that's West Congo, which is vast. Mm -hmm. I could tell you all the things, but I assure you, we're doing dead raisin in there and everything mm -hmm. else that Jesus said to do. And there's nothing impossible. Yeah. And now we know this revival's coming due to the prophecy that was given that when the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, revival will break out in America. Mm -hmm. Now that was spoken, and it's coming to pass right now. Yeah. And we need to get on board with God's awakening for the church and revival of the church and then awakening and revival for the lost. Amen. Revived Amen. out of their death and their sin to life in Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is upon us. This Amen. is our moment. Amen. Let's don't go to sleep. Let's rise. Let's rise to our destinies now and take up our cross and follow our Lord to the end that we might be saved. Amen. Nothing shall be impossible to him that believes. Amen. You might be the answer to somebody's prayer. You know, the, these books that, that Bree has, the, the book on the pygmies, I oh, yes. encourage you to Here's get that. Here's the pygmy book. Testimony after testimony in there. Beautiful. Amazing testimonies. You'll just love it. And children are reading it in public and private schools and Christian schools. Really? We heard it all over the nation. Wonderful. We'll go in and a bunch of kids will come in the meeting. That'll be great They'll, school they'll say, we're studying it in our uh, secular wow. school. Wow. I said, really? There's a prayer to get saved in there. And so then the Jezebel versus Elijah book, which will expose Jezebel in this nation and around the world yeah. and let you uh, show you how to rise like Elijah did. That's a college yeah. course, by the way, oh. that we teach all over. And you can get college credit. Awesome. And then this one has five college courses. It's called Stripes, Nails, Thorns, and the Blood on Spiritual Warfare, Healing, and Deliverance. Very and powerful books. Those are things that we need today. You know, go on Bree's, uh, Dr. Bree's website and uh, research what she's got. 
You have that DVD on the glory that they really awesome. would like. Awesome. Releasing the glory. And the healing the CD on uh, the mirror. On the yeah, that's the music CD called yeah. Heart and Soul Surrender. And the first song is Stripes. Stripes. So, that's the one you want to get. Yeah. So we, we just thank you for being with us today. Father, bless these people. Father, we pray above all that they would prosper, that they would be in health, even as their soul prospers. One thing you can't, you cannot prosper without Jesus. So say, Jesus, save me. God bless you. Have a great day. <laughs> this is Ken and Mary Bostrom. We thank you for joining us today. We welcome you to watch us on KBNTV.TV, YouTube, Facebook, mboston2.com. Also listen to us on WRNO Shortwave Radio. Contact us at kenbostonministries.org. God bless you today.